Welcome to Obsolete Automotive. I'm Austin and today's video is how does fluid drive work on a 1947 Dodge? So what is fluid drive? Fluid drive um, is a type of transmission that the Chrysler Corporation came out with in 1939. Um, it kind of is a in-between for the fact that they didn't have an automatic yet where other makes were coming out with automatics. So this was kind of their answer to uh, the competition. Chrysler introduced this transmission and what it is is a three-speed manual transmission that has a fluid coupler between it and the engine. So essentially you cannot stall this vehicle out. Now Chrysler didn't really dif differentiate between this type of transmission and their other fluid drive which was a semi-automatic uh, variety. Um, so the, the literature of the time, it was called anything from simplematic, vacumatic, tiptoe shift, gyromatic. They had all these names for essentially the same transmission, but they were all collectively known as fluid drive. So it can get kind of confusing because there's basically two types. There's the semi-automatic version and then as in this car, just a standard transmission with a fluid coupler. Um, so to drive this car, you would drive it like essentially any three-speed column shift manual transmission. You know, you got first, which is back towards you and down. Reverse is back towards you and up. And second is forward and up. Third is forward and down. It's that H pattern. Neutral is in the middle, of course. Um, but the cool thing about this transmission is you don't have to use the clutch pedal when you come to a stop or taking off from a hill um, or anything like that. You only use the clutch pedal to shift between the gears. So you can kind of drive it like an automatic um, by you can leave it in any gear and when you come up to a stop you can just use the brake pedal and then you can take off using the gas pedal. You don't have to use the clutch. Now of course if you're in third gear and you're trying to take off um, it's going to be a lot slower, um, so you might be advised to shift into a lower gear if you're taking off or especially on a hill, but you don't have to worry about stalling the car. Essentially, you can't stall this car. Um, the, the, the clutch is not physically tied to the engine. There's that fluid coupler, so when you come to a stop and the engine RPMs go down, it starts slipping. So I can show you real quick um, that this car cannot be stalled. So... I'll put the clutch in and we'll get the car started. And I will put it in reverse. And then I will let off the clutch pedal with my foot on the brake. And I will release the emergency brake. So now we're sitting here idling in reverse and the car's not stalling out. If I want to go in reverse and start moving, I just take my foot off the brake pedal and put it on the gas pedal, and then I can start moving. Use the brake pedal to stop. Now the same with first. I'm in first gear. I let off the clutch pedal, and I'm sitting here idling. If I want to drive, I just let off the brake and push the gas. kind of neat so you can't stall this car out um, you can drive around all day like this you can just pick one gear uh, maybe like second gear um, it doesn't matter what gear you're in so I can put it in second and or third it doesn't matter and if I let off the clutch it'll still idle same with third you can start off in any gear but like I said if you're going up a hill or starting from a dead stop um, being in third gear is going to be really slow taking off, but you can do it. Um, so anyways, this car, you just drive it like a regular three-speed manual. to stop here don't need to use the clutch pedal and I'm in second gear and I can take off like this I can just start driving shift into third
to a stop, again, I don't have to use the clutch pedal. I could take off in third too. Leaving the car in third is good for say, you're just driving around the city, um, a lot of stop and go traffic. You don't have to use the clutch pedal. So it's a really kind of an ingenious design. Um, like I said, it's kind of a go-between between a uh, manual transmission and an automatic. Um, it's not an automatic by any means, but you can kind of drive it like an automatic. First gear. Second. Third. It's a three-speed manual transmission. Word of warning, when you want to park one of these cars with fluid drive, you can't just leave it in gear and not put on the parking brake. So right now I'm in first gear and if I turn the car off, I'm still in gear, but if I let off the uh, brake, I start rolling away. Cause there's no actual physical connection between the engine and transmission. So you gotta put on your emergency brake, your parking brake. And that keeps the car from rolling away. So keep that in mind. If you have one of these cars, um, don't just park it in gear and think you're gonna be good. Because as soon as this parking brake comes off, you're rolling away. Well, that's kind of overview of what fluid drive is, how it works, and how you drive one of these cars that's equipped with fluid drive. Like I said, there is another version, the semi-automatic version, which uh, when I get one of those cars in the future, I'll make a video on, but it functions a little differently from this. Um, like I said, this car and these versions of fluid drive are essentially a three-speed manual, but you don't have to use the clutch as much. Now, it makes it easy for teaching someone how to drive stick shift. It also keeps wear and tear down. Um, well, fluid drive cars were used extensively as uh, taxi cabs, especially the DeSoto models with like extended wheelbases. And they use those way on past you would, when you would think they would stop because the fluid drive, like there's no shock to the clutch and, and mechanical parts because that fluid coupling kind of takes all the force. So essentially it'll last forever. Um, now, fluid drive, it's an interesting part of automotive history. It was kind of Chrysler's answer to um, an automatic transmission before they could get their own version out there. So by 1954, the PowerFlot transmission came out and fluid drive was no more. Now, Plymouth didn't have fluid drive until 1953, uh, but they never really called it fluid drive. Their version was called high drive. Now, the difference is on the DeSoto, Dodge, Chrysler cars, uh, the fluid coupling, it was not a torque converter. There was no torque multiplication. Uh, the owner's manual even has a, a description on how this works. So essentially they describe it in layman's terms as if you plug in electric fan while it's facing another electric fan, as this fan turns, it'll make the blades of this fan turn even though this one's not on. So that's how fluid drive works, other than the fact that it's using fluid, hence fluid drive. Um, as this vein is turning, the fluid spinning around makes this one turn, which then puts power to the transmission to the rear wheels. So that's kind of how it works. Now, Plymouth's high drive, which was introduced in 1953 and used until 1954 as an option until the power flight was introduced, it had a torque converter. So whereas on the semi-automatic version of fluid drive where you had to lift your foot off the gas to shift, on the Plymouth version, you could just drive it without having to take your foot off. Um, now it was different design. Its engine and transmission shared the same oil. So it had like an 11 quart oil change, um, but you did get to double your oil change interval. So I guess it didn't really matter too much, but I think they even had to redesign like the, the floor pan and such to accommodate the their version of fluid drive, the high drive. Um, and they didn't use it for very long as an option because then they had the power flight in, I believe, April of 1954. Now, in addition to fluid drive, you also had just your regular three-speed manual. Um, and then you also had a three-speed manual with overdrive. So you could get like better gas mileage and things. So there was various transmission options. Um, 
the fluid drive, it kind of touted it as also uh, being cheaper than an automatic. So you can drive like an automatic, even though it's not an automatic, but not spend as much. So a fluid drive car would be cheaper than an automatic car from a comparable make. Um, so fluid drive, like I say, it was a stopgap measure. Um, it's really neat just to drive one because, you know, it's easy to drive. The clutch pedal isn't used very much. You don't have to stop and go and mash in the clutch pedal and stuff like that. So um, also, uh, if you want to see more of this 47 Dodge, there is a video that I made that kind of shows the ins and outs of this car. So you can check that out. I'll post a link to that um, on here and on in the description. Um, if you like this video, if you made it this far, give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button down there. Um, don't forget to um, check out my Instagram at Obsolete Automotive. That's kind of the day-to-day -day stuff. Um, as well as my Patreon and Facebook discussion group. I'll post links to that in the description. So be sure to check those out. Um, and as always, there's more videos coming. So stay tuned for that. And I hope you found this video informative, interesting, or just entertainment nonetheless. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll catch you on the next one.